Welcome everyone, my name is Paul Villagran and I teach public relations in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication here at Texas State University. And I'm gonna walk you through um, how we prepare ourselves for engaging with media, telling your story. Because in the end, telling your story is so incredibly important so people understand the impact that professors have here at Texas State University and certainly how that impacts the community and the environment that we work in. Anytime we look at why we want to tell our story or why we want to communicate what we do here at Texas State University, we have to go through a series of questions to ask ourselves, what are we trying to achieve? So when we tell our story, some of the things we're looking at trying to do is first to create awareness. Let the public know what we are doing here at Texas State University in the academic world and how it may impact them in the civilian world. Second, the thing that we want to do for ourselves is to build credibility. We want to be or become the subject matter expert or the go-to for media when, it is, when, we want to, when they want to address an issue um, for the public. The next thing we want to look at is we want to be that subject matter expert who helps shape the narrative, tells the story. Um, sometimes you'll see stories in the media that aren't either actual or factual or being told maybe in a way that isn't true to what the actual thing is. And so the opportunity to shape the story is so critically important. Next, we also want to show how we can take academics, how we can take higher education and show how it impacts the public. And then finally, we want to look how it can help us prepare for the future, both as becoming a subject matter expert on whatever your topic um, is. And secondly, as we look to um, securing grants in the future, um, opportunities at the, in higher education, anything that will um, help you gain traction in trying to do what you're doing for the university. Once we make a decision that it's in our best interest to tell our story, we do want to look at the media landscape. How is that going to impact where we tell our story, how we tell our story? So the first thing I want to talk about is the dynamic nature of the media environment. Um, we used to call press releases, press releases because they went to the press. But now in the public relations world, we tend to call them media releases because the definition of media has changed. How we engage with our audience has changed every day, especially with the advent of digital engagement and social media. So there are these diverse channels of communication where we want to reach a mass audience. And mass is in quotation marks simply because um, how you define mass can be different than what it was, say, 20 or 30 years ago. The media wants to inform the public. That is their role. They want to transfer news. I put news in quotes here because you have to understand the nature of news to give yourself a fighting chance to be able to get coverage of whatever your topic is. Um, and then finally, when engaging with the media, I want you to know that it's not adversarial. While we see a lot of that in movies, while we see a lot of that on television where the reporter can be aggressive, in general, the media just does want to inform the public. So it's not a game of chess. It's not adversarial, adversarial but it is challenging. So you do need to be prepared. We talked briefly on the previous side of the, the news and media want to inform the public on things that are of news value. So one of the things that you need to think about when you're preparing yourself and when you're thinking about what you want to deliver to the media and ultimately to the, the mass audience is to think about um, what are the elements of news. If you Google search elements of news, you'll find some that have six or seven or eight different things that they say this is a news value thing. Um, probably the most significant ones that you see are proximity, impact, timeliness, prominence, consequence, and human interest. Um, I highlighted proximity, impact, and timeliness because those are probably going to be the ones that have the most significant um, value to you as you prepare yourself um, and on what you want to deliver. Um, proximity just means it's um, closely located to the audience that you're trying to inform. Impact can be scope. It's impacting a lot of people in the audience. And then timeliness is probably one of the most important things. It's happening now. Um, we call news news because it's now. Um, it is new. And if you deliver it later, then you realize it's not of as significant value to the um, audience. The other three, prominence and consequence and human interest, certainly can have an impact. And the thing I like to leave with my students is the more you check the boxes on all of these and the greater the scope you have on all of these, the greater the chance that you're going to have to be able to get your information through the media and ultimately to the public. So at some point, there may be an opportunity for you to want to disseminate information through the media to the audience or 
potentially the media may contact you because they realize that you are researching or investigating or studying something that may be of interest to their audience. So before agreeing, agreeing to an interview, some of the things you might want to ask yourself is, is there an organizational policy for conducting media interviews? At Texas State University, we do have a media relations office that you can contact. While they traditionally won't tell you to do or not do a, uh, an interview, they can give, certainly give you tips on how to engage a little bit more effectively um, and how to give guidance on how to best tell your story and um, impact what you're trying to achieve by informing the audience and at the same time protecting the brand and integrity of the institution itself. Secondly, you want to ask yourself, is the media outlet reputable? Um, or by extension, is the reporter reputable? So do a little research to determine if it's a, an outlet that you want to engage with. Um, and then ask yourself the goal elements of, will the interview bring credit to you, your research, um, and Texas State University? And then finally, will the, doing the interview help you achieve your long-term goals? So you've agreed to do a media interview. Um, like the Boy Scouts say, the best way to drive success is to be prepared. So before you conduct that interview, certainly do a little bit of research. Research the media outlet, research the reporter, get to know their name, look at some of the articles they've written in the past. The more you know, the better you can prepare yourself for engaging with the media. Um, determine how you, the interview is going to be conducted. Will it be done over phone? Will it be done over Zoom? Will it be done face to face? Um, will it be recorded? Will it be um, recorded in video capacity? So make sure you understand what the ground rules are there. Ask for questions in advance. A lot of times uh, people who are doing interviews don't realize that they can ask for questions in advance. Um, certainly you can. The media doesn't want their time to be wasted and they don't want your time to be wasted. So they will give you questions in advance. That way you can prepare yourself for them. And again, less time wasted. It doesn't mean that every question that they offer you um, and provide to you in advance is going to be the only questions they ask because follow on questions um, are acceptable and will happen. Uh, and that's your job to prepare for the follow on questions down the road. And then finally, the best way to prepare is to develop your strategic messages, the key messages that you want the audience to take away. So we're going to take a little bit deeper look on those strategic messages. We're going to start it at the you know, 10,000 foot level, the goal level. Those key messages or strategic messages, which is another way to define them, are those messages that address what you want your audience to take away, what you want them to remember. Um, and one of the things you want is to build that relationship with your audience so you are creating supporters. How do you make them care about your topic? Um, Key thing always is your strategic messages must be consistent with your goals and your objectives of what you're trying to achieve. Once you have all that in line, then you're moving in the direction of having messages that will resonate with your audience. Continuing on with our conversation about developing strategic messages, we're going to now look at some of the strategies of it. So number one, you want to be clear and concise. Use simple, understandable language that you um, anticipate your audience will be able to understand. Um, in the journalism world, we tend to talk about writing your story or writing your article or telling your story at about the eighth or ninth grade level, because that tends to be how the audience can process information. So, And by extension, you want it to be easy for them to understand because you want it to be memorable. Because most of our messages are delivered verbally, you want them to be simple to say aloud conversational, more importantly, easy to remember. And always rule rule number two, if you will, rule number one is bring positivity. Always be positive in how you're delivering information because positivity tends to resonate with the audience more so than negativity, especially when it comes to information that we've been talking about from Texas State University's perspective and the research that you're providing. And then finally, when it comes to the tactics of preparing your strategic messages, you should have three. There's a reason for that. One is typically we're going to be delivering them verbally. So three messages does two things for you. Number one, it helps so that you can process the information in your brain. Um, because if you have more than three messages, it becomes sometimes a little bit more difficult, convoluted to process it, to deliver it verbally. And then number two, three key messages tends to give you the adequate amount of messaging so that you're not repeating yourself over and over again in an interview. So when it comes to the anatomy of a strategic message, how I like to encourage people to build theirs is to think about developing a claim plus a fact plus the impact that that fact has. Um, so a claim is an in general statement on the topic that you're discussing. So for a researcher, it can be something to the effect of this research could have this positive impact on the community. 
general statement. More specifically, you draw down a fact, which might be something to the effect that, you know, 70% of the population is impacted by this. That's a fact. The impact of your research would then be simply um, seven out of 10 people who um, apply whatever we're researching will be impacted by whatever it is they're trying to achieve. So you again, you're creating your claim, your fact, and your impact. Then once you have those messages created, practice them delivering them delivering them in advance, right? You should have gotten the questions prior to the interview from the reporter, and so now you can practice them. And I also said earlier, and I'll repeat it here, this is also an opportunity for you to try to anticipate what the follow-on question would be and practice those as well. So here are some fundamental tips for doing the interview. Number one, most importantly, is everything is on the record. From the moment that, that journalist, that reporter can hear anything you're saying, you're on the record, all the way up to the point where they can no longer hear you. Even if they seem to tell you the, the interview's over, um, you still need to and play it as if everything is on the record, as long as they can hear you. Um, number two, stay on the agreed topic and use your message. Um, there are many things going on in the world. There are many things going on at Texas State University. Many of them may not be in your lane. So just stay on whatever you agreed to be interviewed for this particular uh, moment in time. Avoid the no comment because that sometimes can um, look as if you're trying to hide something or by extension, it can look as if you don't know the answer to something that you should know the answer for. Um, always have a comment, um, even if it's just to bring it back to the topic that you're discussing. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you want to be brief and concise. Speak in sound bites. Short, sometimes they feel like choppy sentences because you don't want the media to chop up your longer sound bite in a place that may not reflect well on you or the topic itself. And it's not necessarily nefarious. It's just sometimes they don't understand the topic well enough and they cut it in the wrong place. Okay. Um, you are there. You're in charge. Be polite and firm. Stay in control. The interview can literally not happen without you being there. Of course, because you're doing the interview, you want to be memorable and stay positive. Avoid the negativity. Um, that sometimes draws the headline, but it's certainly likely not going to be what you want to deliver. Um, expect the media to report whatever you say. So if you don't want it to be reported, then just simply don't say it. Um, rule number one in the public relations world is always tell the truth. Because if you don't tell the truth, then that leads us to problems when, it, when you're thinking about the professionalism that you need to have as you're representing your organization. Because that's ultimately the bottom line. Represent yourself, represent your organization, maintain brand, image, and reputation. Finally, after you've conducted the interview, I always recommend people to follow up with the reporter. Give them a call, you know, an hour or two or a half a day later and say, did you get everything that you needed? Do that follow up um, because if there's something they didn't understand, if the topic is very complex, you can maybe clear up some issues so that the story comes out the way that you want it. Again, shaping the narrative. The other part is if some of the things may not be as positive as you want, this might be your opportunity to amend that, to fix that in some capacity. Um, ask them when the article or the, the story in the news, if it's going to be on, on broadcast, will be aired or published. Um, that way you can tell your leadership. Um, monitor the media outlet so you can see when it comes out, record it or grab some uh, screenshot it or some capacity, grab it so others you can use it for um, the future. Um, and then finally, update your organization if they have a public relations office, a media office of that um, or something of that nature. In recap, this series of slides has taken you through the why you should do a media interview, engage with the media, um, and given you some guidance on how to prepare for it, um, how to do it, and what you should do after the, after the interview. Um, so bottom line takeaway is telling your story is critically important. Um, again, it goes to if a tree falls in the woods and no one is there to hear it, did it make a sound? Well, if we're doing research at Texas State University and no one there is there to hear it, is it really having the impact we as researchers want it to have? And so that's what we're trying to deliver. Engaging in the media certainly amplifies that message because you reach that mass audience. Um, the key to success in engaging with the media is preparing. Um, doing your research prior to, understanding who you're gonna be addressing, understanding the ground rules, following the tips provided in this um, series of slides. And then ultimately remember, you're in charge. The media needs you to be able to feed them information because that information is of importance, of value from their perspective to their audience. So stay in charge. Um, make sure you're firm but fair um, when trying to tell your story. 
Um, if you go through this process, you'll have an immense amount of success. Remember, it's not adversarial, but it is challenging. They've got a story to tell. You want a story to have a story to tell to their audience. And so you can make it a win-win scenario. This uh, media training was um, provided by the Translational Health Research Center. Their contact information is on this slide. Um, again, I am uh, Paul Villagran. I'm a professor in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. I teach in the public relations sequence. Um, my contact information is you can reach me by email at P as in Paul, D as in David, V as in Villagran, um, 11 at txstate.edu. Feel free to contact me um, if you would like to do some additional media training, um, sit down and do interviews, mock interviews, both face-to-face um, -face or on camera, we can certainly do that. Just let me know if there's anything that I can possibly do to you to help ease your apprehension of engaging with the media um, and to help you prepare for success.